So now I want to turn our attention to, to mobile music. Uh, and mobile music is an incredibly broad field. Um, uh, like many of uh, uh, the topics that I'm covering in a single video uh, in this module, it, it's actually the topic of an entire course that we teach uh, here at Georgia Tech. Um, but uh, I want to uh, think not about uh, all areas of mobile music here, but, but, but try to focus in on, on a few specifics. Uh, and uh, what I'm really interested in, in here is, is, is not so much about listening and, and, and consumption of music on mobile devices, which is obviously uh, incredibly important. Uh, after all, you know, the, the iPod was originally made uh, as a music listening device. Um, but I really want to talk about uh, things that are more relevant to what we've been covering in the course uh, uh, up to this point, which is about how, how mobile devices help us uh, uh, make and create music uh, in different kinds of ways. Uh, and so uh, I'm focusing in on three specific uh, application areas, because even within that constraint, there's still uh, kind of tens of thousands of examples we could potentially cover. Um, uh, so I, I want to focus on, on, on three uh, specific areas here. Uh, uh, mobile DAWs, uh, since we spent so much time uh, using a DAW in, in this course, I thought it would be uh, useful to, to consider how uh, their move uh, uh, onto mobile devices uh, 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 affects their design and functionality. And uh, I want to look at mobile musical interfaces, since we just uh, spent a while talking about new musical interfaces. This is a, a big area. Uh, a focus on mobile devices. Uh, and I also want to talk about mobile recording, uh, again, kind of related to uh, work that we've done. In that context, I'm, I'm going to talk about a, a recent project of my own, actually, here at Georgia Tech. Um, so first, uh, the question is, you know, why uh, this allure of doing uh, uh, music creation uh, tools uh, on, uh, on mobile devices to begin with? Uh, what's so important? And uh, I think uh, one of the really important things is that uh, it's an ability to, to deploy uh, something on commodity hardware. So if you're developing a, a new musical interface, for example, and uh, um, you want to be able to mass produce it, to scale it up, um, to be able to build your own hardware uh, at scale is an incredibly difficult thing to do. Um, it involves coordinating ma manufacturing and having a, a, a significant financial investment, uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but if I can just run my new musical interface uh, as a software app that, that runs on a commodity mobile device that uh, millions and millions of people already have, then I have uh, kind of the distribution of it already figured out. All I have to do is uh, put my app up on an app store uh, and uh, take advantage of, of what, that, uh, that, what that mobile uh, device can already do in terms of its sensors and its capabilities. And then, uh, and then I all of a sudden have immediate mass distribution of, uh, of my work at, at, at very little cost. Um, the form factor of mobile devices has also played a role uh, uh, in their uh, applicability to, to, to music creation. Um, uh, they're, uh, they fit in your hand, at least uh, smartphones do. Uh, you can uh, move them around uh, to create gestural input uh, uh, very easily. Uh, and they're, they're very easy to take with you, of course, too. Um, portability is a big key. To be able to make music kind of anywhere, anytime um, with uh, something that doesn't require a power source because it's battery powered. It has a, a built-in speaker if you need to use it, though, though it's not great, uh, or of course a headphone jack. Um, it, uh, it lets you make music uh, kind of wherever you are, on the subway, um, you know, walking, uh, walking around town, uh, waiting in line, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, the uh, 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 availability of uh, sensors on the device uh, is also very important, especially for, for new musical interfaces. Um, we have a, a video camera that can be used for a, a computer vision. We have a multi-touch uh, surface that's uh, very applicable to, to things like a piano controller, where you might want to be able to play uh, more than one note at the same time, uh, or a drum machine, where you might want to be able to play uh, uh, two drums at the same time. Uh, it has uh, accelerometers, which are great for gestural input. Uh, there's GPS, so we can know where we are uh, uh, in terms of location and, and use that information. Uh, uh, some, uh, some mobile devices have compasses and, and gyroscopes as well that they provide other uh, means for gestural input. Um, so uh, all of these are, since they're on commodity hardware, we know what we have and it's the same across a, a large number of, of, of devices and, and we can write software uh, uh, that takes advantage of that. Uh, another important uh, quality is networking. Uh, and so uh, because these devices are, are always connected to the internet, we have the ability to uh, uh, make music uh, together uh, with, with other people, uh, either other people that are local in the same place as us, uh, or other people that might be uh, in other locations. Uh, and that's something that we'll explore uh, in, in more detail uh, uh, in another video in this module. Uh, so the, like I said, the first uh, application space I wanted to look at was uh, a mobile DAWs. 
uh, you know, taking the basic DAW paradigm that we've looked at uh, and we've worked at with in, in Reaper uh, through this whole course uh, and, and putting onto, a, usually not a smartphone, but usually onto a tablet. Uh, and there's, there's several recent examples of this. Um, uh, Apple uh, and its GarageBand uh, software for iPad is one example, uh, and Steinberg uh, that makes Cubase for desktop uh, DAW uh, has come out with Cubasis uh, for the iPad, which is the, the, the tablet version of that. Uh, and there's a few things that are, that are kind of common to both of these, I think to, to mobile dolls in general, um, that, that show how uh, their use cases are, are, are a little bit different from desktop dolls uh, and how they've been designed differently to, uh, to kind of accommodate and emphasize that. Um, the first thing is desktop integration. So, so both of these, these products uh, uh, integrate with the, the, uh, the, the desktop applications uh, that have the, the same names as them. Uh, or in the case of Cubase, is a, a similar name to it. So you can start working on a project uh, uh, on the mobile device, uh, and then you can, uh, you can import it into uh, the, the, the full-featured DAW on the desktop and, and continue working on it from there. Uh, so this points to the, you know, uh, the kind of use case for mobile DAWs, which is to be able to kind of work on your music wherever you might be, where you might not have a laptop with you. Uh, uh, but you just want to jot down and explore some ideas very quickly. Uh, and it points to the, the, the limitations. DAWs are very uh, computationally intensive. Uh, remember with that, that non-destructive editing that they offer us in multiple tracks, and we have to be able to render every time we hit the play button all of these tracks of audio and apply different effects and edits to them kind of on the fly as it's playing back. Uh, and that can be very difficult for a, uh, uh, for a, uh, uh, for a mobile device, uh, at least today, to, to be able to handle. And so, um, uh, the, these, uh, these mobile versions uh, lack most of the features of their, uh, of their desktop equivalents in terms of number of tracks and, and effects and have what, how much you can do simultaneously. Uh, and so moving to the desktop is a natural way to, uh, uh, to, to kind of make up for that uh, so that you can, uh, uh, you can start with a, your basic ideas uh, in the mobile space and, and then move it to the desktop when, when you need the, the, the full power of a, of a, of a full doll. Um, the other thing is it, both of these, these programs really emphasize uh, a built-in uh, controllers and, and sound modules. So they have a, a number of, uh, of mini sound modules built into them and a number of different controllers, like a drum machine, a, a piano. Uh, Apple's GarageBand has a, a ton of different controllers built into it, uh, guitars and string instruments, and, and different ones that are intended for people with different ability levels uh, as well. Um, uh, this points to the fact that if you're, you're trying to work on your, your, uh, your iPad, uh, you probably don't have a lot of external gear that you're carrying around with you. Um, so you probably don't have an external MIDI keyboard uh, that, uh, that's ready to plug in, uh, or uh, external sound modules or, or, or plugins that you might be able to use like you would on a desktop doll. Um, and so uh, there's this uh, greater need for kind of a, everything being self-contained in, in a single program. Because if you were carrying a keyboard with you, uh, you'd probably be able to carry your laptop with you as well. And then you, you wouldn't really need to be doing this on a tablet in the first place. Um, and there's uh, traditionally not been a standard plug-in format uh, of mobile operating systems either. That that's starting to change with some inner application audio and, and, and MIDI architectures uh, that have emerged. Uh, uh, AudioBus and, and Jack are third-party solutions. And, and beginning with iOS 7, uh, uh, Apple has its own solution uh, on iOS uh, for enabling uh, programs to exchange audio and MIDI uh, information with uh, each other uh, to simulate kind of what we do with, uh, with plug-ins a, a bit on, on desktop applications. Uh, Finally, uh, they both have a lot of live sound processing uh, functionality with them as well, um, uh, particularly uh, geared towards uh, plugging a guitar directly into the mobile device. Uh, and this, I think, is, also speaks to this notion that uh, if you're using a, a tablet uh, as your DAW, you probably don't want to be lugging around a giant amplifier uh, with you, a you know, guitar amp with you. And so having an amp simulator, you know, to plug straight into, uh, into the tablet uh, has a lot of uh, has a lot of appeal because uh, again, if you were if you were slipping around this this, this giant uh, uh, guitar amp, you could probably just bring your laptop with you as well. So I want to move to uh, another area of uh, of, uh, of kind of mobile uh, mobile music making, and that's mobile interfaces. Uh, and again, uh, a lot of the the most interesting mobile interfaces uh, uh, take advantage of uh, the various sensors that mobile devices provide, uh, often in unusual ways. Um, uh, to be able to deploy an interface uh, at scale without having to make new hardware. Uh, and one of the classic examples of this comes from a company called Smule, and it was uh, uh, one of their first apps called Ocarina. And uh, with the Ocarina, it takes advantage of the multi-touch uh, capabilities of, uh, of the iPhone, for which it was designed, uh, uh, by letting you uh, obviously uh, use the screen uh, as if it's different uh, tone holes of, of an Ocarina, a wind instrument. 
And so uh, you can push down more than one at a time and, and take advantage of the multi-touch uh, uh, to do that. Uh, it also takes advantage of, of kind of the fact that that's not just a multi-touch sensor, but it's also a screen. So it can actually help uh, teach you how to play different songs by animating and showing you what fingerings you're supposed to be using uh, to play those songs. Uh, and then it also uses the breath controller. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, mobile phones don't have breath controllers on them, so it uses the microphone to simulate a breath controller. So you blow into the microphone to actually make the music, uh, and it uses some, some simple uh, MIR uh, kinds of techniques uh, to analyze the audio coming through and figure out uh, uh, how you're blowing uh, and make music based on that. Uh, it also takes advantage of the networking capabilities of mobile devices uh, by letting you share uh, the songs that you create through a, a global uh, kind of social network of all the people that are using uh, the app. The final example that I wanted to cover uh, in this video is, uh, is mobile recording. And, and there are a lot of apps out there that, uh, that turn a mobile device into uh, an audio recorder, uh, uh, kind of replacing a, a dedicated device that would just do audio recording. Uh, you can plug in an external microphone, uh, you, can, uh, you can record your audio and then you know, export it to your computer later. Um, I want to talk about a project of ours, which, which again, along the lines we've been discussing along here, takes advantage of some of the unique capabilities of, of, of mobile devices uh, to make a kind of unique recording application. This is a project I've worked on over the last uh, several years uh, with two of my colleagues here at Georgia Tech, uh, Carl DeSalvo and, and Michael Nietzsche, and a bunch of our students over the years. Uh, it's called Urban Remix. Uh, and uh, the mobile app uh, for iOS and Android uh, lets you record sound, uh, but then it attaches the GPS location of where you recorded it uh, to the sound. It also lets you take a photo that you can associate with the sound, since there's a, a built-in camera. And then it will upload it to our server. Uh, and once it gets to our server, uh, uh, it, uh, it uh, collects all these sounds into different projects that are, are, are organized by geographic community, and then it provides some online web interfaces uh, to let you explore these sounds uh, uh, based on their GPS locations. And so you can look at them on a map and find the sounds that, that you're interested in, and you can also uh, uh, create a, a kind of remixes on the map by, by drawing uh, uh, kind of a virtual trips on the path that go from one point to another, and then it creates this little soundscape uh, uh, representing all the sounds that were recorded uh, uh, along that route. Um, the, the, the larger uh, goals of this project uh, tie back to acoustic ecology and soundscape composition, this, this stuff we talked about at the, the very, very beginning of the course. Um, this notion that we can become uh, more aware of, uh, of the sounds around us uh, and, uh, and of our, uh, of our uh, uh, sound environments uh, by, uh, by uh, going out and recording them and, and repurposing the sounds uh, uh, in our communities uh, uh, for musical uh, intent. And so what we're doing here with Urban Remix is trying to provide a, a very easy set of mobile and web-based tools uh, to enable anyone to do that, to go out and make a field recording of, of sounds they find interesting, to share those sounds with other people in their community, and then to work together uh, uh, to create music out of those sounds. So what we've covered in this, uh, in this uh, video are, are some of the, the motivations uh, for, for pursuing uh, mobile music in, in three particular uh, application spaces out of the many uh, that are out there, uh, mobile dolls, uh, uh, mobile uh, new musical interfaces, uh, and, and mobile recording uh, applications. Uh, we're going to explore these kinds of network capabilities we've talked about a couple times uh, uh, in this video uh, uh, quite a bit more uh, in the next video where we talk about the, the field of networked music.